Hi there, welcome to this edition of Adventures and Coaching. I'm Kim Smith and I'm a career and business success coach. And recently we've been talking about a lot of various coaching topics, including how important it is to uh, define and align your purpose, uh, how to identify limiting beliefs, and a lot about how to change your mindset for success. And we're gonna be shifting gears a little bit and switching it up, and I'm gonna be interviewing some community members about these topics and their journeys uh, to their success. So with me today is Dan from Dogma Athletica. He's the owner there. Welcome, Dan. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's so great to have you. Uh, we've talked a few times and I've always been really inspired by how you've integrated purpose and a lot of these things into your life and your career. So please tell me a little bit about your journey. Sure. Well, thank you for the compliment. I appreciate that. Um, my journey, I'm going to go back to when I graduated from college because really at that point in my life was when I identified the need to really have purpose and definition around my career path as a young individual and defining what meaning was to me and what goals were to me. And so I've been a longtime believer in sitting down every once in a while and saying, all right, What's my purpose? What's my mission? Uh, what are my values that I'm living out in my day-to-day -day family life, career life, social life, all of that? Yeah, and I love how you integrate it to really all aspects of your life, not just your career. And the other thing that really stands out to me is that you did it at a very young age, whereas a lot of people that I talk to, they don't really have any idea of like kind of where they're going and, and just try out a lot of different things. So how did that make a difference for you in your career path? Um, it really helped me identify when opportunities would come up, what were the right opportunities mm. and what were the wrong opportunities for me. Yeah. Because when I took the time to write out my personal values, mm -hmm. what was important to me, and how those values translated into what I wanted my mission to be for my career, it made it really easy when something came up. It might have looked really attractive at first glance, but when I would reflect back on hey, does this reflect my values? Does this help me live out my mission? And if the answer was no to those, then I identified quickly like, all right, this isn't the right opportunity for me. Yeah, that is just such a great example of everything that I try to talk to people about and how important that is. So tell me, you know, we've talked a little bit about how you worked in one industry uh, in the corporate world for a while and then decided to make a really big shift. Yeah, so this comes back to that values and mission piece. Um, it's interesting, when Yahoo first came about, Yahoo emails, I actually wrote out my mission statement and I emailed it <laughs> to myself so I could like have a, a ready repository that I was able to come back to years later and kind of look at that mission and say, hey, is that still true? And so I developed this practice of every couple of years taking a little miniature sabbatical, mm -hmm. getting away on my own, and kind of thinking about those values, were they still consistent with where I was in life? And that mission, and uh, did I feel like I was still in that season of life that that mission was central to me? And so for the longest time, my mission was to use my God-given skills and abilities to create job opportunities and help businesses grow through a finance role. And over the course of the last several years, I just felt the winds of change. And when I sat down about three years ago uh, to do my little miniature sabbatical, I, I said, you know, that's not my mission anymore. I don't mm -hmm. feel that as a calling. And what I identified is that I needed to take some time to transition to find what that calling was. And so I actually did like a three hours type of framework for myself. I said, all right, I'm going to retire from the corporate world in order to recover for a little bit. I'm going to reorient, and that reorientation was using that sabbatical to do some volunteer work and to kind of identify, hey, what is the mission for me, and then redirect. And that redirect was identifying, hey, I don't want to do, use finance as a way of helping people out. I want to use fitness as a way of helping people out. And so I wrote my new mission statement, which was to use fitness and health and welfare to help individuals realize their um, goals and objectives in life. And that's what led us to acquire Dogma Athletica, and that's what right. brought us, my wife and I, to the Vale Valley. Wow, that's a great story. And along the way, did you ever, um, you know, have any limiting beliefs or fears that came up about making such a drastic change in your career after having a successful career for quite a while? Certainly, lots of uncertainty, and yeah. uncertainty can lead to, to fear or you know self doubt. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting uh, you mentioned as limiting thoughts uh, in the coaching business that we do, and we do a lot of performance coaching for athletes, we 
uh, approach it as performance psychology mm -hmm. and we phrase it as negative thoughts. So how do you stop negative thoughts? And it applies to you and I as individuals, as business people. And the, the practice that I identified is really kind of cognitive behavior oriented, mm -hmm. where it's um, identifying when a negative thought comes up, thinking about like, all right, what is that thought? Where is it coming from? To some extent, even recognizing what's the physical sensation that you feel with that negative thought, but then developing a toolkit where you redirect. So you hear that negative thought or you feel that negative thought coming up and envisioning like a stop sign and saying, all right, mm -hmm. stop that thought process. And then having a redirect which is prepared for that. So that thought process for me was, um, I don't know sales and marketing. How am I going to do this as a business owner? It's all about sales and marketing. The redirect was, hey, I've mastered lots of new skills over the course of my career history. This is a new skill that I have the ability to master it. So let me lay out the action plan for how I'm going to master right. sales and marketing to move forward. Oh my gosh, that sounds so much like what I talk about when I say taking a challenge and making it an opportunity. Figuring out you know, how it can benefit you. What is the solution? What is the outcome going to be? And you know, when you did that, did it help you to really hang on to those goals? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It was instrumental in not just hanging on to the goals, but achieving the achieving. goals. And having a, a healthier mental attitude mm -hmm. towards that challenge. Just like you right. said, it's not a challenge, it's an opportunity. And I said, hey, this is something for me to develop that I haven't done in the past. This is really exciting versus really scary. Right. And tell me a little bit about, like, along the way, your, about your support system. Um, family, friends, colleagues. Um, it, having a trusted set of advisors is really important in right. terms of friends, colleagues, coaches like yourself that you can turn to and say, here are the things that I'm dealing with or the challenges that I'm trying to address. Give me your thoughts and input. Here's my plan. What do you think of my yeah. plan type of thing? That's amazing because a lot of times it stays in the head until you kind of start putting it out there and verbalizing. That's right. Um, so that can make a big difference. And having someone to say, this is a really good idea. Mm -hmm. You can make it great if you were to tweak these couple of things about it. Yeah. Oh, amazing. So tell me um, a little bit along your journey, um, you know, any time where you've had a shift even in your current business and how you've addressed that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll say one of the shifts that we took on uh, right away was the ownership transition. And mm -hmm. the prior mm -hmm. owners had great reputations in the environment for what they had done with the gym and what the gym meant. The, the transition was for me to shift that from being the prior owners to my ownership, having that reputation. And the way we really addressed that was me thinking about how do I engage people in the community and people in the gym and establish um, and continue the gym's reputation so that people see, all right, the prior owners are gone, but Dogma Athletic is not gone. Yeah. Dogma Athletic is still there in the same. And so having a thoughtful plan in terms of communication plan, engagement plan, and then really kind of getting it down to discrete steps and saying, all right, here are the steps that I'm going to execute. And we did that, and we had just a wonderful reputation as being really engaging, positive, welcoming culture that yeah. I, I simply love having at the yeah, gym. Yeah, and that really comes through when you know we're in the gym with you and, and seeing what you're doing. And um, I get your emails about your clients, and you always focus some success story. So tell me about um, how some of these things have affected your clients as well. Um, there was a, a recent woman that I interviewed. Um, her name is Jessica DeYoung. She's a local community member here. Jessica went through a battle with cancer, ocular cancer. And one of the incredible things that she shared with me was that coming back to Dogma Athletica was actually one of her motivations mm. for getting through her treatment and getting through her recovery. And I heard that and I was like, you just tell me that because it's me. And she's like, no, honestly, that was, th she said, the support network that she had there in terms of the friends, the environment, the mental and the emotional engagement that she feels in the gym were big motivators for her. And I said, you know what, that's wonderful to hear because that is my mission. Yeah, that is amazing. So tell me a little bit about things that might really inspire you or inspire people that are listening to this interview. Um, what really inspires me is when people have a growth-oriented mindset, mm -hmm. when people look for yeah. learning opportunities. And so we have every month a theme. September's theme is coincidental with the school year is learning. And so that's something that just it, I love seeing it when people 
bring tidbits to me in terms of opportunities for me to grow or when I'm able to provide people with opportunities for them to grow and learn. Yeah. It's having that growth mindset, I think, makes for a, a wonderful community like what we have here. Yeah, that really does make a difference from thinking, you know, of like growth and expansion versus, you know, oh, this is too challenging. I can't do it. And I love how people are adopting that, especially you and your organization. And it's been super inspiring sitting here with you today. And I'm so excited for your success and where you're going. And I look forward to hearing more and more about, you know, where things go. And um, if, if anybody is interested in learning more about you and your business, how can they reach you? Um, they can go out to our website, so dogmaathletica.com. There's actually a section on there where they can schedule a visit with me, and I would love to chat with them about either fitness challenges or performance psychology um, and see how we could awesome. be of assistance to them. Perfect. That sounds great. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how coaching can help your success, please reach out to me at Kim at adventuresincoaching.com. And I hope you have a wonderful and successful day.